Yeah. I've only been with the one recording before not being recorded. There we go. Oh. It's just a smidge. We got four again. Yeah. First item is the acceptance of the minutes of the May 8th meeting. Um, those in the room have them in front of them. Uh, those online, where were they? Did they come as a late email this morning? Is that? Oh, I, didn't even, I, didn't even I, I didn't see them on the computer. They just, they just came in, I think, not too long ago. Okay. Um, have you had enough chance to look at them? Everybody except David. Additions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, the minutes are approved as presented. Okay, uh, we're up to you, Allison. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so just a brief update from Human Services. Um, I think I had mentioned uh, last month that we had applied to the uh, Department of Agriculture for a grant, which will allow us to uh, install actually a large fridge off of the back of the senior center. Did we talk about this? Yes, we did. Okay. So that is still pending, um, but we're still moving forward, obviously with Farms to Families. We still have a couple of spots open. So if you know of any folks that might wanna participate in that program, uh, that's once a month providing fresh fruits and vegetables um, and some also um, dairy and eggs to residents here in town. So feel free to direct them our way. There's information on the website that they can always obviously call us as well. Um, Renters rebate, we've done nearly 100 renters rebate applications already for residents, um, and we will continue to do those all the way through October. So once again, if you know folks that might qualify that are 65 and older renting here in town, feel free to send them our way. Um, and then lastly, Sylvie brought up the at-risk application from 2020, no, I'm sorry, 2011. Um, so this was an application that clearly was developed in response to Hurricane Irene, which obviously was devastating for lots of communities uh, across the state of Connecticut. And so um, what it brought to light though, is that there's probably a good use of this type of application here in town, but what are the expectations of the resident? What's a realistic um, response from our emergency management side? So um, because Sylvia brought this to light, um, I am meeting with the chief um, of the fire department, our uh, director of emergency management, as well as our um, resident state trooper to kind of take a look at how do we essentially maintain a list of our some of our most vulnerable residents that we know would be at risk during um, a power outage, let's say maybe they're on oxygen, um, we know they're living alone, um, but how do we also set an expectation that we aren't necessarily responding to every single household in town in the case of emergency. So we'll be having that meeting in the coming weeks and then um, I'll be reporting back to you all about what we what we conclude. So, so thank you, Sylvie, for bringing that to my attention. Um, and I think that's it with human services, unless anybody has any questions for me. Um, Allison, I just have a comment um, sure. about the at, the at risk, um, um, whatever you were just talking about. Um, yeah. A really good example, of course, of this, and I'm a homeowner in Mansfield. So is during the holidays when we had the power outage and the deep freeze at the same time. And it happened on a Friday, right before the holiday. <laughs> and like, I have an, I'm an example of somebody lost power and 
heat at the same time. And yeah, and everything was closed down. It was an odd situation. It was a perfect storm of terrible situations. But that's just a really good example of what happened. We ended up moving into the uh, the hotel near the Eastbrook Mall. But there were people who were like, you know, like, you know, were like, what what happened? You know, why was there not more? And of course, there's only so much you could do. But you know, just anyway, it just anyway, just gonna throw that in there. No, that's a that's a great example, and and that is also the list that we had um, compiled from 2011 is also what we tapped into for uh, when we started reaching out to residents for vaccines. So I think you know. Just in general, it's really good for the town to have this sort of list. I did reach out to the Connecticut Local Administrators of Social Services, which is almost every town in Connecticut, their director of human services belongs to the organization. And I did get feedback from other folks and almost every town maintains some sort of list. Some of it's very informal, some it's very formal where they put it in the senior center newsletter and ask people to update it annually. Um, so we just want to obviously keep it realistic also and also keep it current because what we have now is 12 years old. Um, so so we'll be taking a look at all of that and, uh, and hopefully come up with a good plan with all those different players at the table. One of my neighbors has MS and is supposedly on some sort of a list with the electric company. Um, so yes, you can get on the list with Eversource. Yep. Now, are you Hi, Do you pull their information or can they use yours? <laughs> no, because of confidentiality, we can't share those lists, but certainly Eversource can ha has a list of those who are, um, you know, maybe on oxygen or so they prioritize those properties for power outages. But our town, as of now, doesn't, doesn't have a formal program in place. So you have to call and resource yourself because, or somebody right. has to do it for you. Yes. Because my daughter did it for the father. Yeah. And they came out the storm to check on him. Oh, yeah. But after I brought it up with Allison, she checked back to see because my question is we've been handing out these forms for years. Are they valid? And the answer was no, we do not have at this town a formal at risk program. So that's where we are. It's ever source of nothing, I guess, for the moment. Other questions for Allison? Thank you. Uh, Mary, you're standing in for Sarah. I am. Um, it's only June 12th, and we still have so much going on here this month. If you haven't picked up a newsletter, I strongly suggest you do. Uh, we got a program this week, uh, demonstration on kimonos. Uh, and then next week, we're having our summer fling, and uh, that should be a lot of fun. And then at the end of the month, we have a man named Jeff Ballinger, who's a podcaster. He has a PBS series uh, coming to do a, a program on New England legends. And I've heard from people that have seen him before, and they highly recommend him. So I suggest you, you look into coming to that as well. Uh, one thing, uh, since Alice is here, I have these flyers on the that I believe um, Jamel's working on this with Allison, the RARE program. I don't know if you're aware of it. It's a resident assistance and relief program for people who need help with their rent or utilities. Um, I believe, and Allison can correct me if I'm wrong, that they are pretty fluid um, criteria in terms of income and such. I'm not really sure because I don't deal with it directly, but. If you know anybody who can um, benefit from this, they should absolutely apply. Uh, our summer night. Can we just speak? Yo, go ahead. No, go ahead. Sorry, just real quick. What was that about the income that you said? I didn't quite. Um, I thought, I, from what I've heard, and I don't know, there's some degree of fluidity with return with regard to income. No. No, there's there's pretty strict income limits okay. um, in order to qualify. 
This is ARPA funding um, that you may recall the town approved last summer. Um, so we received a total of $150,000 of the town's ARPA money that they set aside for this program. Um, folks can only access it one time. Um, so it's supposed to be one time assistance to help somebody either maintain housing, pay down a large electric bill, get an oil delivery or two during the winter. Um, so we have exhausted about a, a third of the funds. Um, so we're just trying to do another big push. It was in the newsletter again, um, this, this current town newsletter, the June, July edition. Um, but the cap, yeah, unfortunately is pretty firm. Uh, there's a range though, Mary, so maybe that's what you're thinking, but there's a range um, for income, but the way it was passed uh, with town council, it's, it's pretty um, specific about their income limits. And, and the use of the funds um, can be pretty broad. Thank you for that. Um, the other thing is this summer next program that we have um, we started last summer was very successful and it will continue into July and August. And in July we have an illusionist coming who had, is quite uh, well known and has performed all over the world. So again, watch the newsletter for the information on that. And that's about all I got. Always happen here at the senior center. I <laughs> said <laughs> something I want to compliment Mary and her staff. Most wonderful program she's been having. Very interesting program. Now we have on the website the at your fingertips, which gives sort of more permanent resources. Do we need some mechanism where you can? find out about programs that are available sort of in one spot. Social programs, social service programs. Any sort of program that would be of benefit to seniors. Well, what is the at your finger? Is that on the town website? Uh, it's on actually available through the Commission on Aging website. Oh, okay. What the commission did uh, was create essentially a reference of right. yeah. all sorts of available uh, organizations and people, including dentists and doctors and various programs. This is sort of fairly fluid to go on there. Uh, and I think of other things that might be available at different times. Is there a way we could have a one-stop resource for the more fluid things? Yeah, I don't know why we couldn't also post the newsletter to the COA website. We reference the newsletter from the COA website, but it isn't. Yeah, let me ask Sarah about how we could do that. You know, we, we do the newsletter, which we disseminate here by mail, by email. Um, I send reminders on things all the time. We put them on Facebook. There are some people that just aren't going to look and then they're going to say, how did I miss that? Or why don't you do this, which I just did three days ago. But I think the wider dissemination, no matter what the way of doing it is always better. And your little blurbs every day and reminders are great. But sometimes it's too little, too late if people haven't been paying attention. <laughs> little trivia things. And I see a lot of people coming in and taking up more than before. We have a lot of members the last month or so because we have varied programs we've been having history and, and the, the feud family feud and trivia that was fun the other night <laughs> so words getting around that were just we a fun ones <laughs> i put in a plug for the email i really like the email notification 
Yeah, I, I, I enjoy doing it, but I get a lot of positive feedback. She's having fun doing it. <laughs> if it's not fun, don't do it. <laughs> okay, well, uh, yeah, the Tribute uh, ITD should have a meeting this morning. So, or Roland Hills, everything is this week. Moving along. Is anything else? Okay, you want me to go into the other one or do you want to do something? all the construction road and shores. Is that That's all done? Then all finished. Yeah, the roads, the roads are all done, the sewers are all done, the water is all done. And now all they're doing is just they bring in brand new units and putting them in. Extra $230,000 sitting in your pocket, you can go over there and you can buy one. Uh, yeah, they just they just yeah. they just build it. Yeah, they just... yeah, we got the billboard up and the pennants are up and yeah. instructions. Is that right? Oh, a lot, a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. I I've never been in it. I don't think I understand. Oh, this is a pretty. It's a this. So invite anybody. No. 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 Um, well, I'm glad you're here. I want to just talk a moment about data rights. Uh, Linda, the um, director, was came to Chumber Hill a couple months ago to speak with us because we have a lot of new folks now uh, to update people on the data right and the uh, the um, bus that comes through. Uh, one thing that still bothers me is that um, when you call, they call you the night before, let you know. When you're being picked up the next day, I know that part of their message is still blanked out. And I told them time and time again, I said, You don't, I don't hear my name. I, mm -hmm. I just hear the time. I don't hear, you know, that you're coming, say, Jumper Hill Village, and you don't say, like, say, we're going to Walmart. Um, it doesn't say any of that. This is part of the message. So they, they keep telling me they're going to they're gonna fix it. It's still not fixed. This has been several months now. So I don't know what their problem is about that's that. Your, that's the message that you get. Yeah, yeah that you get the night before. Yeah. <laughs> I've talked to Linda. I've talked to, um, what's her name? The uh, assistant director. And still, it's still the same problem. So I think they really need to start looking really into that. Okay. Um, we have a welcome committee at General Hill Village, and when we have new folks, we've been creating new folders for everybody. Um, what's going on in Jumper Hill? We thought we got some flyers. Activities are going on here um, at the town hall and at the community center. So we put a folder together, five folders. So whenever somebody moves in, we just give them, sit down and go over a few things, and um, you know, so they're aware of what's going on. Also, we want to do, unfortunately, our fundraising days are over at Chumber Hill. Again, because it's a liability, you know, we have an older population now. So because of COVID, um, they don't want us to do indoor and outdoor. Again, it's a liability because the ground is not stable enough for people to walk around safely. So we're just brainstorming, um, like, I'm trying to remember now. The community center, and we missed the ball on that one. They had a tag sale, I believe. So if you want a table, you know, we could sell stuff, or we were thinking of maybe doing a raffle. Um, so hook up with them in the future, or at a local church, or have um, EO Smith maybe do something there. Um, so we could just raise some money. So something we need for everybody. You know, we can do that. 
Uh, we just got, um, sorry about the size of that, just about a brand new TV for the uh, Four Seasons room. So I was well shocked. Might be just a little smaller than that one. I don't know where the, how that got paid for, but again, we just got that last week. So everybody's been requesting a new TV because it's, you know, you've got different, you know, eye issues, whatever. So, um, so that's exciting. There is a new, I don't like it, but again, that's just me. We got an outhouse out by the pavilion now. Because people, when they go out for activities, they don't have time enough to get back to their apartment because of, you know, whatever issue they may have. So they put an outhouse out there and there's a cleaning station right next to it. So you can wash up, you know, afterwards. So I've been getting a lot of, I've been hearing a lot of good things about it. People like having it there, you know, it's convenient for them. So, so far that's been working and they come out once a week to clean it for us, which is really good. So the main staff doesn't have to worry about that. Um, this coming Thursday, um, UConn is coming for a nutrition program. Um, it's a food tasting demo. So a few of us signed up for that. Um, let's see, New Horizon. David, are you doing this? New Horizon in July 5th, Green Eagle? Not you. Okay, so it's somebody else. Yeah, so we're excited about that. It's July 5th, and it's at 10 o'clock in the morning. They bring in an eagle that they had, um, to, you know, because it can't be out, outdoors anymore on its own. So they said it has to be 10 in the morning, it has to be a cool day. They don't like hot weather. And they said we have to be 10 feet back. So we're excited about that. Let's see here. Uh, hold on. Okay, that. Oh, they just, we just been, the uh, grounds committee has been putting, and um, Mario has been putting out flowers and bushes. They redid outside the pavilion. They took a lot of old shrubs and weeds away, and they replanted some really nice flowers and bushes. So it looks really a lot, a lot better out there. Um, I mean, our program director has been out for about a week and a half. Her husband had surgery, and she's back now, so she's been doing ongoing activities. Um, the parking down at this um, second row cottage is still an ongoing issue, so Susan's been looking into that because when we have like a homemaker or a visitor, there's just not enough parking over there because um, it's mainly for residents, so they're still working on that. And talk about fundraising. Um, I think that's it, folks. Okay. Yeah, well, um, oh, I want to ask you, is there an upcoming meeting with that right down the road? What do you mean? Any, any kind of meeting at all? Yeah, but yeah, but that would be different. Every time we have a meeting. Yeah. Is, there, is there one coming up? Uh, this Friday, yeah. Where, when, what time? It's up here. It's at their, their office, Sean. Oh, their office. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do they do it once a month? How often do they do meetings? Once a month. Okay, I probably can't, can't make this one, but I'd like for these to come to a couple of them. So we talk to them. Okay, I'll call them and see what I can do to arrange to get there. What time is that meeting? Uh, it's usually two o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, all right. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, thank you, John. Um, just a comment for yeah. your welcome pack. You might either refer to or include one of the at your fingertips. Oh, okay. I'm sure. It has a wealth of okay. references that somebody moving into the area yeah. might mm -hmm. appreciate. Okay. Well, thank you. Moving on to old business. Um, we still have two generalized topics that we don't really have a next step for. Talk to uh, Ryan and Tony. We have a little bit of a feel for where the town council is. Um, so basically, what does the commission 
feel would be appropriate to do relative to a senior center? They got the ball now. On your lead. So that's a really fine thing to show. Really easy to show. Which they can take the same until they decide that they're not. It's clearly not a hard game, but I think. I guess the one suggestion I had is under new business, actually. But should we have a compilation probably in, in conjunction with Sarah as to what are the features of a new senior center that we would want? We talked um, about- And they certainly couldn't be very specific. Well, some of them could, but um, so that it would get into the hands of the, the committee and the engineers during the early process of planning rather than wait until it's pretty well formulated and, and say, well, that would be hard to put in at this point. But it well, seems like we're talking two or three years down right. the road with all the procedures that the town has to do. Has come up to vote. We got to encourage. What I think we've got to encourage now is to make sure people know that what percentage do we need when it comes to a referendum. We have to have yeah, percentage. So many. I don't know what. So I mean, how far away? Well, but that the, the vote is for November twenty twenty four. That's an election year, right? So if there's a referendum on ballot with the ballot we'll have critical mass yeah yeah and we i think that there's rules to think about how we can encourage people to get out and vote for it well, otherwise it's not going to happen Tony, Tony didn't uh, portray a good feeling for 2024 uh, she more or less uh wants to go to the 2026 which is not a uh, presidential did you say Goodwin School was one I think, of the I, think, I think Goodwin School was mentioned. Okay. That's that's my idea. Yeah. Goodwin School with uh, portable portable housing right on the same property. I don't I I don't I don't see that. But that's that's my goal. You know, or that well, should be our goal, I should say, not mine. I should decide to do this, not mine. Well, I kind of think that um, separating off the proceed the senior center is a steeper climb to pass than if it was combined with something. Like where they're talking as part of the town hall, it just goes through as one you know, the senior center. But if it's next to the community center, that's a separate vote and a separate referendum. Oh, yeah, but if they can, if, I think the only way that they that, that they can sell it is, is they're going to have to, like you said, they're going to have to combine it with something, whether they combine it with an addition to the community center, which would probably be the best the best phase to do it because I think we can get the folks here, like you said, standalone. You're right. Steep, steep climb, not 90 degrees, maybe 105 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, and I, I don't know, I think we're going to have ample time uh, to discuss what we want because I'm pretty sure that they're going to have us get together like they did before mm -hmm. when we were doing something. And the engineers and everything are going to get together with us. Once. There's nothing wrong with having a list. As a matter of fact, if we give them the list, we just give them the book that Sarah got. Mm -hmm. so here's your list. This is what we wanted. Okay. Anybody take a look at that book? I took a look at that book. It's mm -hmm. comprehensive, very extremely. Yeah. A lot of good stuff in that book. Mary, if you could maybe mention to Sarah. <clears throat> 
the positive response we got from Tony and Brian about the idea of incorporating the specific architect into the mix for senior center with regard to the design features and the design stage. You mean um, the architect that, that specializes? Yeah, right. specializes yes. in, yeah. in relation to the book, then she could maybe nudge them every few months saying, I got this book here. You guys really need to take a look at this. <laughs> okay. Hey, John. If, if they, you know, their response was positive enough that I think we keep bucking them a little bit and saying, hey, you know, don't, don't forget about this resource here. <laughs> hey, Dave. John, it, my question is this. Have, if they haven't chose a location, I guess for me, choosing location was going to determine a lot of the next steps in terms of what to incorporate, et cetera, et cetera. So if they haven't chosen a location, it would, to me, it would make more sense if this commission um, recommends a location or recommends, you know, redoing the current senior center or combining with the community center. Because everything else is going to dict whatever that location is going to dictate the next steps. Dave, I'll tell you, I got a funny feeling their mind's already made up. Right. Okay. Uh, they presented plans with us with the, with the new senior center would be right in the middle of the parking lot of the town hall. They've already got this in mind that the senior center is going to be part of a building, whether it be the town hall, whether it be the community center, it's going to be like the one up in Willimantic. I think that's probably what they have in mind. I don't I don't think we're gonna get a standalone. I really don't. We probably not. And I think, but I think we need to make a recommendation. I mean, if even if we were recommended a standalone, and I think we'd be better off combining and, and use the community center more, but yeah. I think we need to recommend a location would be my first step to this whole mess. Well, I think we have I think we have we 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 I told them anyway, I told them in a meeting that the equipment was full. Uh, I told them here, we ought to build it here. They, they keep turning things down. I don't know. Just keep pushing, I guess. They keep saying that we can't expand here because of. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah they, they make some good remarks about mm -hmm. this place. I, you know, I understand. I was just doing it because maybe this would be the easiest place for them to do it. And, you know, Building, so apparently they, they want to go to a different group. So I said at the last meeting, whatever, whatever you decide, if you decide to go to the lot of standalone, part of the community center, that's fine. I'm all for it. Just, just, let's just get a new senior center, period. And what? There are getting more members. We have more members. We need a bigger place. Absolutely. And Mary's and the staff are doing that. And I think that helps promote. The sooner the better. I think I'd like to see the commission as a group officially send a letter of recommendation to the town council that we incorporate the senior center with another building as opposed to a standalone for the following reasons, one of which being much easier financing. Et cetera, et cetera. More interest because in a town with a mix of population like we have here, getting people to vote for a separate building for the senior center, that, that's a non starter. I don't think we stand a snowball's chance in a hot place of getting that. But it seems like to me we're jumping the gun. We're talking about three, four years out. Yeah. We can't make that kind of we cannot send that kind. Of, I don't believe you can send that kind of letter right now. It's too it's soon. soon. It's it's soon. soon. I agree with that. If they're, still, if they're still trying to, but we're not even sure what they're still trying to do. You heard, <laughs> you heard what they said at the last meeting. Right. So I think it's just too soon. They got a positive note. They got a positive note from right. the last meeting. Okay. Yeah. And it's, yeah. Okay. I'd say close to four years or what? 
Yeah, at least at yeah. least four years. There's an assumption that everyone knows the importance and the function of a senior center. And I'm not sure that really is true, especially if you take all the council members. Um, I wonder if we could do another presentation in the fall and hit what a senior center does. Um, what are the the minimum requirements that we foresee? Um, so far, senior center has been kicked around as a term that would fit anywhere. Second floor of the town hall next to the community center without any real indication of how many meeting rooms, how many this or that, how many square foot does this really need to be a functional place for us? Um, and I think the town council <laughs> wouldn't say would listen, but they would hear us <laughs> <laughs> um, if we made it a case brief. Um, anyway, just a thought. I'm just can I do you mind if I weigh in just an opinion about having the senior center and the community center somewhat together is I know a lot of seniors from Mansfield who are very active seniors who go mostly to the community center and don't go to the senior center. And I feel like making them kind of together or commingling them would be a positive thing because, you know, um, it would introduce those very active seniors to the, you know, the things that are the benefits of the senior center and vice versa. I just think it would be a good, you know, it would be a good relationship, but that's just my opinion, just throwing it in there. And I'll throw my two cents in. My mother goes to the community center every morning, goes home and then goes to the senior center in the afternoon. So, you know, she's going back and forth between the two buildings right now. Right. It's like the way in. Senior centers, and this is nothing new, they have a perception problem. Uh, I cannot tell you how many programs I've scheduled and I get emails from people saying, well, what about your patients? Are they, are they this? <laughs> I, in my last job, I had a selectman refer to my patients. <laughs> Hello, we're not a nursing home. And I think that that, that that is a, and you know, the National Institute of Senior Centers, Council on Aging, they're all working to dispel this, but it is, you wanna talk about a 105 degree climb? It's a hundred, it's crazy. You cannot get people to understand the services and the programs that senior centers provide. Um, I've always said, if you get them in once, they'll come again, 99% of the time. One of the problems they also have is the first time a person has contact with the senior center, a lot of times is when they're in crisis. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's the senior centers that are doing a bad job of, of communicating this or, or I, I, if it's ageism, maybe it's ageism. I don't know. Uh, I had a woman at my last senior center who was 100 years old, came every day. Her sister wouldn't come because it was just old people there, and she was 102. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's that's probably one of the toughest fights you had. You're going to know how right she is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the old you. I think I might be the youngest one. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's really my senior center got promoted people. And I'll sit, I'll sit, you know, that's, that's what people my age are saying. Senior centers are old people. <laughs> But I think that the perception of old people is very outdated. I know it is. So I don't know how you fight that battle. I try all the time, but I don't know that I'm making much headway. Well, I agree with Nancy that the, it would be a good mix to have the two of them side by side, or somehow it would also do wonders for the perceptions. You know, I think it's a double-edged sword because I know other towns, um, well, where again, I can only go back to my personal experience. The, I, I was very vocal about letting other groups use the senior center for meetings and things for that very reason. 
I wanted people to get into that building and see what was going on. Uh, we had a situation where outside there was a, a little town green, there was a gazebo, it was constantly being um, graffitied and whatever. But because the kids used the building, we never had a problem inside, ever. Um, but the seniors who were there when I got there were the ones who had agitated and gotten that center built. And they, it was their center. They didn't really want other people. I think it's a fine line. Well, I think it's a fine line because they did all the work to get that building and they didn't want people in there, you know, breaking it. Um, okay. And I, I uh, to tell you a personal story. The first time I went to Florida, I went to Fort Lauderdale, and I was twenty something years old, and I was very disturbed <laughs> by the fact that I was. And I, I love old people. Always did from the time I was a little kid. But being surrounded by nothing but old people, I found disconcerting. Um, on the other hand, there's a lot of older people who don't want to be around young people, so. I think if you're going to combine with the community center, there has to be a wall of some sort, to some degree. That's all I would say about that. And she should be wide open. There should be a door there. Right. Yeah. But if they're close enough for the interaction, I think it will eventually come. Yeah. 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 Even, even I think it's a good thing to have the ages intermingle. Uh, that alone will help dispel some exactly. of the ageism. Exactly. Um, but there does have to be. Some delineation somewhere along the line. But if they're in proximity, they might accidentally discover each other. That's true. That's true. Yeah. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> okay. Did they answer your question or are we still up in the air? Um, I think it deserves more discussion in the fall. And I would be willing to take a try at a presentation indicating what's the benefit of a senior center, what's its objective, et cetera. And then you can all throw stones at it and see whether we ought to try and present it or just scrap it. Um, but at least it'll give us a step for the fall. Okay. I think it would be a good idea to include in that presentation what a senior center is not as appropriate for what Mary put in. We don't have patients. No, we do. We're not a medical facility. We're not a haven for sick people. <laughs> and I think the programs Mary is bringing here are bringing in younger people. And I think that is a good goal. Oh, yeah. Well, one other thing I will say about senior centers, again, people think it's just old people playing bingo. You're generally programming for a 50-year age span. So you never need all of them. There has to be something for the 102-year-old. And there has to be something for the 55-year-old. Um, and I do try to do that. But uh, the perception, as I say, is the hardest thing to knock down. I think there's a perception that because not an extremely high percentage of seniors visit a senior center, that it's not successful. I don't think the objective should be to reach every senior in the, the community. It's, a, it's available, it's a resource. Hopefully a lot of people will use it. But I don't take it as a real downside because there are people out there who don't want anything to do with it. I'm pretty sure that uh, if we send out the, the, the newsletter to every, every senior in this town. How many people here are participating in our programs? You do. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. We, we should support the center as. The commission. Why don't you? I guess that's the question. Uh, I'm not old. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I just it's it's, it's just it, 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 I I guess I don't see the stuff now. Yeah. Okay. You know, I don't want to sit on a bus with a bunch of old people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, what do you want to do? Let me know. 
I, I'd like to sit on a bunch with a mix of people. <laughs> I, I, so we can I, I don't know. argue. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I really don't. I'm, I'm at the point in life where I really don't need anything. I got everything. Yeah. It's it's for Boy, are you in heaven now? I am. <laughs> I am. Well, and I think there are some people who are never going to join us. Exactly. Yeah. You're never going to get everybody. But, the way I feel right now, I am not 82 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I'm, I'm not. All right. The way I feel right now is I want to go out. I want to go out and do things. I don't want to come here and sit here with Christmas. So won't be. Okay. <laughs> and therein lies the problem. Right. And that's the problem. Now. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's that's me. That's, that's me individually. Okay. That's that's the way I feel. That's the way Judy feels too. Okay. We just assume go out and do something. Well, then you can still do that. We do. So that's yeah, we do. People do. They've been telling us for how long you're only as old as you feel. Yeah, but... I am 34. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to go with I told you. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm being honest with you. I'm giving you my honest opinion. As far as I'm I'll tell you, my mother never went to fun. Okay. She would my aunt did. My I've mother been, never would. I've been on this commission for 22 years. Okay, I've been I've been fighting on this commission for 22 years. Do I come here? No. <laughs> That's what Will enjoys. I, no, enjoy I know he didn't find the give and say. Yeah. Oh, yes, I really do. Yes, I guess, I guess that's my goal. Is my but, yeah. But what about like our picnic coming up? Why don't we try and encourage younger people to come to the picnic? Are you going to do that? Get the word out. Like your friends and you come. Uh, the word face. Right. Well, we do do that. They, 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 yeah. What kind of activities do you have planned? Or well, we have these these summer nights programs, which are at night, so the people that are working can still yeah. come. Right. Um, you know, we do history programs, we do entertainment, we do what don't we do? We do the classic movie has been growing every month. We do. Um, we actually had a request from a group to have a show and movie for their group, and then that kind of Spread out a little bit. The history programs have been great. Uh, one last week I was mean, amazing. <laughs> and when we have 15 people. I know. And that yeah. was an excellent program. Do you, do you think, I don't know, this is just something that popped in my head. Did you ever think of doing anything towards the single person who is at home all by himself, lonely? Well, we, made, a, we made that a priority. So I, yeah. I think, I, I mean, I think that that's an avenue that should be because the person who is married, you're going to have to, they, they, they just don't think about coming here. We we had a concerted outreach to people who were alone during COVID. Um, and, you know, we did all kinds of things. I, I often tell people the hardest thing is you don't know who you're missing. Exactly. And I don't know how you find out who you're missing. But, it, you know, I mean, we got people over who we live that they're all by themselves. Okay, how do you how do you how do you entice them to move over? Oh, over, over where at Rolling Hills? Well, I went there once and talked to them about yeah. coming. I got a few. Okay, I'm just maybe kidding. we should do it again. Yeah. Um, I think we ought to have somebody from the senior center at least once a year. I don't know if somebody went after me, but I did go a couple of years ago. Fact, and I would be happy to do it. In fact, I think it would be a good idea if there was somebody from the senior center at our September meeting and say at the May meeting yep. of September for the upcoming holidays and in May for the upcoming summer events. Yep. I'd be happy to do it. And we have Maybe the extra have to bus go from the uh, housing to the senior center staff with an invitation. Piece of cake. <laughs> I'll see through it. <laughs> Be happy to do it. Yeah. I think we have a lot of great yeah, stuff it does come, it, it comes it's to the world of our club. Well, 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 well,
we have a lot of outsiders coming, especially by the lunch programs now. We do. Well, we have, yeah, we drop them on the ground. Oh, we need to One sip at a time. That's it. She can only do so much. Yeah. We're the voices out here. For the well, that is true. Word of mouth is also, we haven't discussed, that's very valuable as well. Okay. I so, wonder if. So we're going to see you at the picnic? I don't, I, 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 <laughs> or the what are, you, what are you trying to put me on the spot? Is that what you're trying to do? Are you going? You're, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I don't you see. Like I don't know. I don't know. I haven't talked to my wife yet. <laughs> She's the boss, not me. <laughs> because we like to see you. We used to see you a lot. And it's nice if each of us bring a guest. Even to Jorgensen, we had a, a review of what we're going to have them. We have some good programs coming up at Jorgensen. Well, your parents, that's, that's, that's your culture. Okay. And we had a ball at Bill Seafood the other night. Uh, I even got taken to, to dance with me. <laughs> So we have bringing the, younger people into the world. We have the whole crowd of lively and the animals here. Yes. <laughs> you know, some people are Thank just you, and never going to get there. Well, I think it would be all encouraged. <laughs> you always show up. Mm -hmm. You're supportive. I just started showing up. Well, to start. <laughs> well, people are busy too. I mean, I get, but um, I still think we could use a little PR. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> okay. We lost our member of the public. Oh. Um, so, you know, that was Mr. Roger. Was it? Um, I think I've just got the problem. Okay. <laughs> The next meeting is September 11th. So can I, can I say something? Can I leave the board out here? Can our front entrance there with the cinder blocks that have been broken for the corners for two years now, could they be fixed before somebody gets hurt? I don't know how or who. Yeah, we have to. I mean, that is a dangerous situation until somebody gets hurt. We have a lawsuit. Liability. I really uh, think it's been two years. I guess we have a request in. But those two corners, someone could hit with a wheelchair or whatever and cut themselves. In. We're going to. We're looking for a lawsuit. I'm no, sorry. Sorry, we're talking about this. Those are those center block. This is the I mean, it's ridiculous. For two years. And, and what needs to be fixed? I, I can't. I apologize. The audio, I don't know if David and Nancy, it's. Those, I get like bits and pieces. The center blocks near the entrance that are broken. S say and again? Cinder blocks near the entrance that are broken. Oh, okay. Do you know anything about that, Mary? Like, have we no. requested it to be fit? I don't. I don't. And I also just noticed this morning where I'm parked, there's a big crack, like an inch wide crack in the sidewalk that should be repaired. Okay, I can okay. I can look into both of those things. Um, and that also brings up the railings. Um, those are getting fixed. We're in the process of the, you know, going through the insurance claim. Um, but those other items, I can speak with Sarah about. Make sure that we haven't already alerted facilities about them and have them looked at. I am. They've been like that for two years, at least, and I think it's possible. Why are we neglecting? 
we have to straight up mm -hmm. to see something and we go by it. Yeah. That's why you don't see it. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I see it every time I go by it. Okay, I just, I just want to mention one thing. The affordable housing commission went up before the uh, planning and zoning commission. We have a big scale of our disability. They're in the system. Over the fifteen percent of the fifteen percent. He didn't say no. Say yes. Everybody listen. So all we can do is just hope that maybe we don't vote for the rule and send it back to the city. Where we stand, we had the uh, developer from the course on forty four. For us. I, I asked the lawyer right in the line. I asked him, Sir, any restrictive policy? Why are you getting out of my mouth? He said, No. So, let's see. How small is he being called? That's <laughs> Oh, okay. mm -hmm. I apologize for not getting on you on your I mean, I, I won't have anything all the time. Yeah. So, since things come up, I'll, I'll bring it up before so that we can get through what's going on. Last month, we had a meeting with the Department of Public Safety and Public Health. Yeah. 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 Last month was technically a special meeting with me because we mixed up the dates. And so I went back two months <laughs> okay. to start the, the agenda. <laughs> and we were not there as a house. So, two veterans of MD. I have to say, at least last meeting, we knew where we stood. We got answers. Me, that was questions or comments? Entertain a motion that we adjourn. I make a motion. All in favor, please. Return and see you in September. I'm sorry, I'm sorry.